This is Jonathan Ferguson, the keeper of firearms and artillery at the Royal Armouries Museum in the UK, which houses a collection of thousands of iconic weapons from throughout history. And on this episode, Jonathan's taking on perhaps the weirdest game we've ever shown him, Power World. Whoa, okay, we just shot our animal friend at the enemy. Why did we do that? Because you can. It's, it's a pen gullet, so I don't know if it's like a penguin bullet. Makes for a good explosive warhead. If you enjoy this kind of content, make sure to keep an eye out for our latest episode of Loadout, which dives into the story behind Counter-Strike's iconic orb sniper rifle. Right, time to wish Jonathan good luck as he takes a look at the guns of Power World. That is not a terrible representation of how a musket is reloaded. If anyone doesn't know, cartridges are a thing. I, I haven't grabbed one to show you. It's just a paper tube with the ball at one end and powder in it. And I think that's what's being flamboyantly thrown up and caught for no reason. And then it looks like that's going straight down the muzzle. Now that's where it departs from reality. Um, what you need to do is bite and tear and pour so that you get a nice consistent load of uh, black powder at the bottom of the barrel in the chamber. Then you push down the paper with the ball in it and ram it down. It would work to just slide down the whole cartridge, probably. Yeah, you wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to do it because there'd be a risk of a, of a, a hang fire. Probably would affect your consistency with velocity. It would definitely affect accuracy. But we do get the ramrod out very, very quick. Spin, ram, spin, put back. You do have to spin ramrods typically because they have a flared end for a good bullet ramming shape. There is a, a gesture toward priming going on as well. So there's like this this cartridge, which I don't see getting torn open, but then it's not high fidelity, gra fidelity graphics. So maybe it's implied that it's being torn. The cock's being cocked at least. The frizzen is flying forward when it shoots. Considering the nature of this game, I am incredibly impressed. This is one of the more detailed flint locks or muzzle loading weapons full stop that I've seen, which is amazing. This is not, as it turns out, what the game is trying to show. The game is trying to show a normal muzzle loading musket. But I grabbed the haul already, so you may as well see it. It does have a very similar barrel band at the front there, uh, with the double straps on the top. The rammer underneath. Now that's interesting with the hull. This is because you can load it from the muzzle if you need to, because how it's supposed to work is actually very cool. So flintlock mechanism in the middle of the of the gun rather than on the side. And is, there's a what looks like a backwards trigger is your breech block lever. You push that backward and that unlocks the breech, which pops up and you still load from the front, but you load from here. Okay, so that green thing has an AK. He looks quite happy about it as well. What's weird is it's scaled very oddly. It doesn't seem to be as big as it should be in his hands compared to the player character. That is, again, surprisingly detailed for the style of this game and for the fact that the this is a green cartoon monkey that is wielding this Kalashnikov AKM. We can, we can identify it as an AKM. And even the gas block looks correct for an AKM, amazingly little cleaning rod underneath the barrel. Yeah, I don't think it, if you try and place that in the hands of the, of the player character, I think that's scaled down for the monkey, but he still seems to be struggling with the recoil. Oh God, some, uh, the idea that someone out there is making AKs for monkeys is uh, kind of intriguing and alarming all at the same time. So this thing is huge. I cannot stress how enormously huge this thing is compared to the guns I've seen so far. But again, detail, there's a moving slide, the slide locks open, the reload is quite quite well done. So I went looking for huge 1911s because this is clearly based on the Colt 1911 or maybe 2011 actually, because it's got quite a, quite a wide grip. Although eh, capacity is only six. Let's pretend it's single stack because this is. This is the LAR Grizzly, and um, I didn't bring another 1911 to show you the scale, but you can probably tell it is also huge. I guess it's like a 1911 Desert Eagle, because it's that 50 cal. Very awkward to eject, but then there's a huge magazine, not unlike the one we're seeing here. Chonking great slide, but we have the classic 1911 controls, the safety, and this gun has a, a pretty wacky trigger guard in it. The Grizzly, not so much, but it is squared off like a like a sort of Glock trigger guard. Well, more like a Desert Eagle trigger guard, actually. And the, the width of that grip as well. This thing looks like it takes Magnum rounds, even though 
in game it doesn't seem to be any kind of a, a magnum pistol but i think i think it's quite a striking similarity considering that this thing doesn't exist This is one of the upgrades that you can give one of your pals, give the guy a submachine gun, and then he sits on your head and fires alongside you. Oh, that almost looks like a bolter pistol to me, to my untrained non-Warhammer eye. I've done it. I've indoctrinated Jonathan into <laughs> Warhammer. Yes. <laughs> I don't know. No, I think it does. I think it looks quite... What do you think? It, it, it jumps out to me as like sci-fi 40k, almost Gears of War. I nearly said Gears of War, yeah, but I didn't want to detract from the um, from the 40k reference. But hey, I guess I think Gears is, owes a lot to 40k, doesn't it? Now there are some sort of sights on there. There's a there's a rail type strip on the top, and what almost looks like a a ring sight, like on the P90, mounted on the back. Considering that that looks like quite a large weapon, and this thing is sat on your head, you're losing your hearing in your right ear, or like Absolutely. almost certainly. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. It's it's going to be uncomfortable. You're going to get hard bits of metal po uh, poked into the back of your head. You're going to be deaf, probably in both ears, but more so in 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 one of them. Yeah, if you look at look at it compared to the pistol, which is also which is enormous, like the scale of the pistol is enormous. This is a big gun. This is the size of the AKM that we saw. Yeah, interesting. So we've got um, I've seen a number of real world guns so far, and then this is the only one that really seems like it's from a different different world. Again, overall, more detail than it needed. Like a, a double barrel shotgun. We're already familiar with like sci-fi double barrels from the Doom games. They could have gone very much fantasy with that. This is a very conventional side-by-side -side hammer gun. Side locks there. So it's almost like an old flint lock or something in, in terms of the lock being built, the mechanism being built into steel plates and they are attached to the side of the gun. This probably makes people think of the Old West, the coach gun. Although this looks like a full length, fairly full length gun. It's probably not as long barreled as you would want for shooting birds. It looks more sort of workmanlike defense gun, something like that. But it has quite a long set of barrels. There's even a little bead sight on the front there. Well, I th you know, I think the action on the shotgun's good as well. Again, it's well modeled. We can see right down the barrels. We can see the shells in the bores, in the in the chambers, I should say. The mechanism is, the brake mechanism's maybe a bit glossed over, but we can assume it's a top brake. It, it could well be. I just can't see it in detail. Again, pretty impressive. This is much more Fortnite-y. A little bit more cartoonish in its proportions compared to the double barrel, but the reload is quite realistic. Looks like we're just not cocking it on the last shot. So there's still an empty case in the chamber. So after we've reloaded, pumping the pump ejects the case. I think that's what I'm saying there. So in other words, correct. There's a bolt handle on the bolt carrier, which is a bit weird. There is not normally a bolt handle, certainly not a big sort of race gun, semi-auto style knob on the bolt carrier because the pump is your cocking handle, essentially. Is that something you'd have on like something more, more akin to a Saiga 12, like a magazine yeah, some, fed exactly. style shotgun? Yeah, something in that. Or, or even um, like, you know, think of one of John Wick's Gucci semi-autos um, would have a great big easy to grasp bolt knob on it because you're it's like a normal self-loading firearm you cock it for the first shot and then it cycles itself with a pump gun it's kind of redundant to have essentially two cocking handles on it but hey the u.s army has adopted a rifle with two cocking handles on it so what do i know Now, as some of you might well have spotted, this is actually a real historical firearm, or pretty close to it. This is the Spencer carbine in this case. There were rifles as well. Uh, in fact, our rifle in this particular facility is much nicer than this carbine. This has been ridden hard and put away wet, as they used, <laughs> used to say. But it's roughly the right configuration for what we're seeing here. This has two barrel bands. The traditional uh, Spencer carbine has only one. Little flip-up sight, just like we're seeing here. 
and then how it works is half cock or if you're feeling a little unsafe you could go to full cock and then you cycle it so it is a lever action but it requires two steps you've got an external hammer or three steps if you're going to do it safely so half cock cycle the action the, the bolt drops out of the bottom of the gun a bit like the 1887 winchester shotgun feeds around from the tube in the butt and then chambers it up here and then you would go full cock and fire so multiple actions required but we definitely would very much call this a, a repeater in case you're wondering about the ammunition it's this here and out comes your magazine tube and it's this very distinctive humped receiver shape you can always identify a spencer from that now the elephant in the room here is that this is functioning as and is called the single shot rifle so they have combined the real world spencer repeater which has the magazine in the butt that i showed you with the sharps which is a dropping block single shot so i suspect they got a bit confused or just liked the look of the spencer over the sharps kind of combined those two classic old west firearms Yeah, your pals don't have to just fight for you. You can put them to work in your arms factory. Wow. So I've got a few sheep here assembling my assault rifles for me. Something a little dystopian about that. They're having a nice time. I built them a hot tub. They're happy. You built them a hot tub? Yeah, keep them fed, keep them sheltered, keep them safe. Give them a hot tub. They just got to work. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. What has become of us as a society, Dave? Did I see you cutting down trees with an assault rifle? Yeah. And is that a an economically viable use of that weapon? Oh no, it was a huge waste of resources, but Good. I needed to <laughs> get a clean take of um, the weapon in action. As to this assault rifle, it feels quite generic compared to the, the other guns. There's a sort of an AR-18 vibe to it, maybe. Looks like it could be made out of sheet metal, but quite modern. It has the Picatinny-esque rail on the top. Very hard to place. I, I wouldn't be comfortable saying that was based on anything in particular, other than maybe the big boxy receiver or something like the AR-18, AR-180. The 18 being the assault rifle, the 180 being the semi-automatic rifle. You know how we had the um, little guy with the submachine gun on your head earlier? Yep. This is like the big version of that. Now you're the little guy with the small gun on someone else's head. This really does look like a sort of Pokemon from hell. Where does his minigun go when he goes all aggro? Some questions are best left unanswered, <laughs> I find. The, the colour scheme makes me... Is this meant to be like a Pikachu? It's a it's a big steroids. electric bear instead of a small electric mouse. So I said minigun. I don't really think this is a minigun. It's more of a macro gun or closer to something like the... Well, I don't know. I'm trying to scale it based on the... Yeah, it's kind of kind of halfway between a 20mm Vulcan and the 762 minigun. Very much a sort of sci-fi game take on a, a chain gun. But it's not called a chain gun. It's called... What's it called, Dave? I think it is called Grisbolt's minigun. Grisbolt being oh, it is called a the... minigun. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I guess for him, it's probably a minigun. Those those are probably no bigger than 50 cal, those, those cartridge cases. I'd call it a midi gun. Almost perfect Browning M2 50 cal machine guns. They have to actually run to like the storage boxes to pick up the ammo as well. Wow. So you put them to work and then they have to go like, oh, right, I need a belt of 50 BMG for this. It's not 50 BMG in game. It's just called like rifle ammo. It's nuts though, because this is so, so detailed that it has the correct mounting lugs for a proper mount, even though they're not using the rear lugs. Like they don't need to have that on there, but they've modeled it like for the, for the type of game this is absolutely bang on. Yeah. 
So this is reminding me of an old 80s toy toy range called Dino Riders. Yeah, so this this is kind of a, a really weird cutesy take on that concept. Only the the sort of built on weapons or the you know equipped weapons on the dinosaurs would stay on them. And here they just appear out of nowhere. They're not really based on any real world missile or rocket system. They're probably closest to something like the rocket pods on gunships like the Hind. But they're usually round. They're not usually square shaped. They need to be somewhat aerodynamic. Or maybe maybe a ground based multiple launch rocket system, which does have a sort of a squarish blocky assembly that rises out of the bed of the vehicle. Quite a cartoonish looking rocket launcher, I'm gonna say. It has quite a bit of recoil, which it shouldn't have. It also doesn't have a hole in the front, and the warhead pokes through the weirdly bell-shaped muzzle. It's almost like it's backwards. If you spun this thing around, that bell-shaped feature might make more sense. The bazooka was named after a made uh, a sort of um, homemade musical instrument because it had that flared shape to it, but it's at the back. The front doesn't need it. It doesn't help. It makes aiming harder. And in this case, it causes problems for the graphics. It's almost like this has been put into the game backwards. Whoa, okay, we just shot our animal friend at the enemy. Why did we do that? Because you can. It, it's a pen gullet, so I don't know if it's like a penguin bullet. Makes for a good explosive warhead. Yeah, you see, the conceit of animals going to sleep when you kill them is a little bit subverted by them literally exploding when you shoot them at the enemy. They live. The pen, the pen gullet lives. Do they? Yeah, it lives. <laughs> You oh yeah! Like, you just do like the oh. return to ball thing and put him in a put him in a box to peel up and then do it again. There we are. I have underestimated the developers. <laughs> Rolling with this as best I can. It's a shame that the penguin thing doesn't just have his head sticking out the end like a human cannonball. He should have a little helmet that he puts on like a human cannonball. But he seems took, to just stick sideways onto the front of the weapon. It took no time at all for, to get you on board with shooting the penguin out of the rocket launcher. <laughs> was... Just needed a helmet. <laughs> It didn't take Safety long, first. did it? <laughs> yep. I want to see him coming back, and I want to see him wearing some sort of PPE, and then I'm fine with it. <laughs> what an absurd game, and what an absurd mind I have. Okay, guys, we made it through that one. That was uh, quite quite a wild ride. I did, in honour of the game, wear a, a shirt featuring my own animal companion. Uh, that's my cat, Cobweb. So, hope you enjoyed the surprisingly interesting and accurate, in some cases, guns of Power World, which I gather is extremely popular. Um, as ever, guys, please do check out our Royal Armouries YouTube channel, socials, um, our three bricks and mortar sites if you can. But we'll absolutely see you here again on GameSpot next week.